Welcome back to our series on J-Organ. Today we're going to uh, utilize the slider controls and uh, buttons for pistons and the transport uh, functions for the recorder and a tuning control actually. Um, I've already done some configuration to this keyboard. Now all of the pistons uh, operate on note on off messages and these keyboards, when they come, uh, have several user-defined uh, setups that you can choose from. Uh, I went in ahead and made sure that these already had note on off messages assigned for the pistons and the transport controls. And um, depending on what keyboard you get and what model, uh, the M Audio Axiom instruction set is, is very um, thorough. It walks anybody through uh, just assigning the buttons which are done on board here on the screen. Um, and it only takes a couple of minutes. Um, and then I've also, we're going to migrate to another disposition, um, American Classic Organ. Uh, it's a very large organ, um, so when we go into the screens, don't get confused by what you're seeing. I'll try to be as explanatory as I can be. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started on this. and. Um, you'll be able to have full swell controls, crescendo, and, and the whole nine yards by the time we finish with this. Thanks. I've already gone in and copied the original disposition and made some changes inside such as wiping out the existing piston settings so that we can start clean. Um, and I've named it Axiom 1. So we'll open this. <clears throat> now our goal today is to come down here and set up eight of these pistons because we physically only have eight. The cancel piston, the set, and on the recorder we're going to worry about the play button and the stop button. And we also want to add expression, choir expression, swell expression, and a crescendo. Now the controls we'll be using for this are these four, or rather eight, assignable buttons for pistons one through eight. Our cancel button, we're going to use one of the transport buttons for set, play for transport on the recorder, stop for stop. We're going to use this control here for tuning the first rotary controller. The first slider will be choir, second swell, and third crescendo. So first we have to tell J-Organ that this keyboard exists just like we did with the Yamaha. So we'll go into customize. And there are four divisions in this instrument and we're going to use all four on the same keyboard. And this MIDI interface this keyboard has its own USB MIDI interface and the system knows it as USB audio device. So we're going to go ahead and fill in on all of these the same keyboard. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now we need to discover the range on each one. Require low C once, high C. Okay, the great low C, high C. Now the pedal, <clears throat> watch what I'm going to do here. We're going to limit the range on the pedal. I really only want the first octave to demonstrate with. So we'll record low C to low B. Now you'll see here that it only went from key 36, like we said before, that's low C in the scale on this keyboard, to 47. And it stops there. It won't respond to anything beyond that. And the swell, low C to high C. Now we're finished on this screen. We can move to the next. And because this organ has pipes added on it, it's asking me where the pipes are 
We're not going to worry about that right now because we're not there yet. This is what's important and where we start getting our transports and, and piston assignments. The screen is your main monitor <coughs> um, and the device is what we want it to respond to which in this case is our M Audio keyboard USB audio device. Now listed in this window are the elements that we can assign controls to. And you'll notice all of the divisional pistons, the generals, individual stops for when we get our stop controls, individual stops, draw knobs or SAMs, connected and further down you'll find things your set piston sports crescendo warning that's the indicator that warns you the crescendo's on you can actually if you have the right driver cards put indicators on your console and have them light up when you press the pedal um, so what we want to do let's set our eight general pistons and again, this is all a discover mode. Initiate the piston, press one. You'll see a little plug there. It shows that it recognized it and it'll even tell you what the value is uh, that it recognized. Uh, so we'll go and finish in turn each one. Now we need to go and, why did that not take, seven, okay, it did. Now I want to find my cancel piston, here it is. We'll find our set piston. that is all for the pistons because that's all really that we have available here um, now uh, swell expression comes up first on this so we'll go ahead now we're using the second slider for this go the full range once and then back again and then click OK anything else in this screen we need to assign since it's here and there actually is we can expand this a little better for here's our recorder transport uh, we'll assign the stop button and the play button Uh, the play button in this is actually a toggle. Uh, I found out uh, by trial and error. You want to put it under the toggle section. If you put it under activate, it will only play while you're holding the button. So you want it to actually toggle on and then stop will cancel the play action. Now we're finished here. What we're looking for in this screen is the choir expression, which is here. Ah, see, I forgot to tell it that we want the USB audio device. Now I can go and change. This is the first slider for the choir. All the way up, all the way down. Click OK. And when 
I'm looking for is our crescendo. And I think that's on the third screen. Uh, since we're here, we might as well do the tuning adjust, and we're going to use this first rotary knob. And I want to give it one full turn and one full turn back. I'm still looking for, here's our crescendo right here. And that is, the, again, tell it what keyboard we're on or what device we're on. We're going to use the third switch all the way up and all the way back. And I think that's it at this point. Eight pistons, cancel, set, tuning, and three expressions. Next screen again is our audio settings, which I've already taken care of. And we're finished. Now let's see if we're responding correctly to everything. Our choir is up in this corner. And it is working. Our swell is the second slider. It is also working. And our crescendo. And here's that indicator I was telling you about earlier. Now let's go ahead and test our pistons. And you'll see each one briefly light up and the stops will change. Let's test cancel first since there's stops on already. That works. Now our pistons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now there's nothing set on 8, so why don't we go ahead and test our set by pulling out a couple of pistons, uh, draw knobs, and we'll press set once, and you'll see it light up over here, green, and I want to save that to number 8, now I'll cancel. And we'll hit 8 again, and we see that that's working correctly. Now let's test our tuning, and on this instrument, it's in the right screen as an add-on. And you'll see this tuning adjust, and we will rotate that, and you'll hear it, uh, provided I put some stops on here. And we can reset that where it's supposed to be. Now let's test our transport. We'll push play. Helps if you press the right button. And we see, of course, it is working. <coughs> we can change our registration on the fly. Expression up a little bit. We can use our crescendo pedal.
so really just like before um, other than getting your controller set up to send the correct MIDI messages uh, as long as it's a note on off message um, as far as the uh, assignable buttons are concerned um, there's really nothing again that you really need to know about MIDI um, uh, we can stop our recording now you'll see in the recorder window itself all four transport buttons are represented here however only in the uh, only the, the three re stop record and play are represented here in the actual organ model um, they can be added of course to the forward and reverse controls and then of course we could use our forward and reverse transport buttons to control that um, really that that is about it at this point um, so hopefully these four episodes have given enough information to um, get you started get some keyboards hooked up and and explore J organ um, I personally want to migrate to something different um, uh, before we get into hooking up pipes and whatnot I want to do it the correct way um, uh, this instrument has been undergoing tests since uh, roughly May uh, when the artisan system was installed and the pipe drivers were installed as a uh, stopgap until I get the rest of the hardware to keep it all within one system. Um, now that we're happy with the computer system that's here, um, having changed out the computer in order to handle the, uh, the sample sets better, um, we found that a, single, a dual processor uh, with one gig of RAM runs much smoother than a, uh, a smaller PC with one core and only half a gig. Um, it just handles processing better for uh, the variety of things that I do here. Um, so what I'm going to do in the next few weeks, we're going to re-gut this instrument and prepare for the rest of the artisan system. Uh, the next I believe three episodes are going to focus on um, stages. Now, the artisan system is very modular uh, and very easy to configure and set up and install. Um, and we're going to do it step by step. The first step being getting keyboards and pedal board uh, and a handful of pistons, um, which is what's here now uh, operating. And I'm not talking about screen capture software where we go in and auto discover things. We're literally going to shut down this instrument for the next, <coughs> excuse me, for the next month or two, and um, and take it apart. The keyboards are coming out, um, and we're we're going to put it on, mount all the hardware on a nice uh, relay panel, and show how to lay all that out, how to trace your mains on your keyboards, um, and terminate things properly. Uh, and get a system up and running step by step. Um, uh, the, the first part, of course, would be the keyboards and pedal board. The second part is going to be our combination action, of which part of it already exists as far as the pistons are concerned. But now we want to use the draw knobs. Um, and at the moment, it doesn't warrant another episode just to show you how to auto discover two keyboards and a pedal board that are already there. Um, so, in line with an organ crawl episode, uh, like I spoke about last time, we, we are literally going to pull the organ out, turn it completely around, and start rebuilding it to include adding the, the PC up here inside, um, adding some external hardware uh, that matches the console, such as a, a card reader, um, or media reader they call it, uh, a four port USB, interface and a DVD writer and we're going to incorporate that into the name board here since there's nothing else here um, so that I can access the computer at any time without having to have cables all over the place um, such as for these videos a lot of the video processing is done on this machine because it's a heftier machine so I still want to be able to get into the machine uh, but I really don't want it sitting up here anymore and then we're going to do some speaker stuff too 
Um, and then eventually the last part is uh, obtaining the artisan uh, pipe drivers and replacing the outdated system that's in here now. Um, not really outdated, I have an older card that interfaces um, that I got from another organ project that was defunct. Um, and we want to keep everything in the same company just because it interfaces better if everybody's the same vendor. Uh, so join us in a few weeks and hopefully we'll have this knocked down and packed away properly. Take the pipes out and pack those away properly. And um, take the keyboards out and start uh, installing our MIDI system. Thank you. Thank you.